No, please don't switch off. This is not a mistake. This is the birth of a new radio, the Yaesu FT-DX10. Peter Waters takes a look at it. Is it for you? Hello once again and welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters and I'm going to talk about the Yaesu FTDX10. Now there are two ways of reviewing a transceiver. You can look at the technical specification, do all the measurements, noise floor, dynamic range, sensitivity, that sort of thing. But really and truly that's already been done. Uh, Bob Sherwood, for example, Sherwood Engineering Site has already done some tests on the FTDX10 and published some detailed figures, and it comes fairly high in the rating. But you know, I think that uh, today we've reached the point where the technical side is not so important. In fact, I did a video about a month ago now, and I'll put a, 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 a link to this um, at the bottom of this um, video. And in fact, I included some quotes from Bob Sherwood and Bob Sherwood was saying really and truly you know we have come to the point where the technical performance of the transceivers of today particularly on the HF bands has reached a point where they're all very similar they've all got a good dynamic range they've all got a very good noise floor they've all got excellent sensitivity such that the normal operator would be more than happy with the performance of almost any of the transceivers. The big difference is the facilities, and I think that's that's true. I think today, the transceiver that you buy is gonna be determined by what it can do, not how it performs as such in the technical um, area. It's what it can do. Does it offer you the features that you want? Is it easy to operate? Does it give you the required sockets on the back for this and that? That's the sort of thing I think you're interested in. So. I'm going to approach this, um, I'm not even sure it's a review actually, I'm going to approach this talk about the FTDX10 from that perspective. Now, I've used many transceivers in my time and it doesn't take me too long to decide what I like and what I don't like about a, a particular transceiver. And although I'm not going to concentrate on likes and dislikes, what I'm going to try and do is bring out the features which I think are important to most people, how they're covered, what it does, um, does it do it in the way that you expect, that sort of thing. I've lived with the FTDX10 for three weeks. Now, it's not a long time, I grant you, but it's long enough for me to sort of find my way around it and um, look at the... I think the more important aspects of the radio. Now, Yesu have got an enviable reputation on HF transceivers. It all goes back, I suppose, to, in terms of the most popular one, the Yesu FT101, and everybody seemed to have a Yesu FT101. Fast forward to, what, 2015, 2016, and ICOM introduced the 7300, IC7300, and, Everybody seems to have an IC7300. Exaggeration, I know, but it seems that way. Well, Yes have been playing catch up and they introduced the FTDX101 about a year or so ago now. And although it's got a similar um, product code to the FT101, really it's not the same. Now, I'll grant you that we, you know, we, we're going back a long, long time. But the FTDX101 is a dual. Uh, a, a dual receiver um, uh, transceiver has two two separate receivers in it and so it's not really comparable and it's also in the higher uh, price bracket but now they've introduced the FTDX10 that really puts it in the price bracket that the FT101 was many many years ago so I think that possibly the FTDX10 is Yesu's new FT101, and it's certainly a head-on challenge to the IC7300. So, <laughs> with a rather long introduction, let's have a look at the Yesu FT-DX10. We'll start by taking a look at the back of the FT-DX10, and this perhaps starts to highlight 
the extra features that you get compared with the IC7300. We start off on the left hand side and the top left you've got the RTTY socket so there is um, some significant dedication for RTTY on the FTDX10. Then you've just got a single antenna socket. Below that on the left hand side we've got the tuner socket for an external tuner. Then we've got an RS232 port and then finally on the uh, bottom right we've got uh, an accessory socket. The fan itself is quiet and only seems to come on when needed. Moving over to the right at the top left we've got the remote socket, we've got the socket for linear, we've got the speaker output and then the standard 4-way 12 volt uh, supply connector and beneath that we've got a quarter inch jack which is for CW key. On the bottom left we've got the USB port for connecting to a computer. Then you've got two USB sockets there that can be used for the keyboard um, and a mouse. And finally on the bottom right, which a lot of people would be interested in, you've got means of connecting an external display. So all in all, there's quite a lot of connectivity there on the rear of the transceiver. Now we take a look at the front panel. Yesu have decided to put all the um, controls onto the right hand side. There's a cluster of controls around the main tuning knob. They've left this part bare. There could have been some push switches there. Um, Icom have put some push switches there, but uh, yes, we've left that clear. Uh, strangely enough, there's really some space up there. That's a little display to indicate when something's on or off, but they could have put some uh, controls up there. Now, it's very much a personal thing. Um, putting all the controls around there, they're all in one place, but... Um, at certain viewing angles you've got to sort of move your head slightly to see those. It's not a major issue because my experience is that once you start using the radio you know where the controls are anyway. But it's a different um, uh, style. Uh, Yesu have gone for let's get all the controls there near the hand. Icom have gone a different way and put switches down there. Um, and as I say that's a personal thing. Now, if you look at the Yesu screen, you'll find that it's marginally bigger than the Icon. I've used the IC9700 because I happen to have it switched on, but uh, the screen on the 9700 is exactly the same as the 7300. You can see there's a difference. I hadn't realised immediately there was a difference, but when you put them side to side, you can see the difference. These days, menus are important because there's so many different parameters that can be selected and adjusted and Yesu menu system or the primary menu system is reached by pressing this button here and you'll see you get a whole load of parameters that can be changed um, whether it be SSB, CW, um, screen, screen colour etc etc all the primary menu items are selected in one go and what you do is you select whatever one you want. If we select that one there. And then if we come out of the uh, screen, as soon as we press this button, we're controlling the level of the uh, waterfall display because we selected that on the button. So whatever menu item you select and you come out of it, that is uh, there on the screen. So for example, if you were sending CW, you wanted to change the speed, You'd go into the menu system, select CW speed, come out of it again, and every time you adjusted that, you'd be adjusting the CW speed. Now the icon method of doing it is somewhat different. You've still got the same knob to press, but if you press it, the main parameters that you need for the mode of operation come up. So we're on sideband at the moment, and we've got mic gain, um, we've got compression, 
and uh, we have got the monitoring level and also of course we've got power so we're on SSB we can change our power we can change our mic gain we can select compression switch it on or off and adjust it while we're on SSB now if I change to uh, CW let's go to CW we're on CW if I press this button again we've still got the RF power but then we've got the key speed and the CW monitoring pitch parameters that you would need to adjust when you're on that mode so I come have done it a different way uh, the main primary menu items that you need to change come up depending on the mode and these actually can stay on the screen you can leave them on the screen while you're operating or just switch them off which is another um, uh, feature of the uh, icon method the FTDX10 will decode CW and uh, makes a pretty good job of it as you can see the FTDX10 meter is uh, simulated analog whilst the ICOM uses the bar metering system I found the um, selectivity on the FTDX10 extremely good. The variable selectivity, you can go from wide down to extremely narrow. I'm uh, quite impressed with that. Changing modes is pretty easy. On the right hand side of the main tuning dial, there's a button that says modes. You press it, you get a choice. So that's simple. And change of bands is just as easy. On the left hand side of the main dialing knob, there's the band button, you press it, and up on the screen comes the choices. So that's pretty straightforward as well. I did mention earlier that there are some deeper menus. The main menu comes up that I've already shown you, but on the, on the bottom here, we've got some other menus. Press that and you've got a choice various things that uh, you can go up and down so that's very similar to uh, the style that uh, ICOM adopted in the 7300 a uh, couple of things I want to point out on this radio that uh, I find uh, quite interesting we have something here called IPO and what this does let's switch itself off you press it there You've got a choice of IPO AMP1 and AMP2. It doesn't stay on, unfortunately. But if you switch IPO on, what actually happens is that the signal path goes straight to the mixer. It bypasses the front end completely, it goes to the mixer. It doesn't make it clear whether there's any front end selectivity. I suspect there is. But anyway, the signal goes straight past the RF amplifier to the mixer. The theory being that that gives you um, a cleaner sounding signal on the LF bands. And I must admit that listening on 80 meters, I did find that a significant improvement, particularly at night, switching uh, the IPO on so that the signal goes straight through to the mixer um, made a significant difference. The other thing that I found is very interesting is that there's uh, an audio uh, pass filter, an audio filter, which you can switch in. Unfortunately, the conditions are not very nice at the moment. And not only can you switch the audio filter in, but you can actually change the pass band of the audio filter. Um, and it's, it's another little control that helps when the band uh, is noisy. Now we'll take a brief look at the spectrum display. And it's very much like a lot of other radios really. You've got the waterfall here at the bottom and then you've got the spectrum display at the top. And uh, you can tune a signal. If I, if I touch there, we've gone off the signal and we go back to the signal roughly there. So you can click on the screen. You can adjust the level of the um, waterfall display, the intensity. Um, you have to go into the menu, and if I turn this up, you'll start to see the uh, noise come up. So you can adjust, adjust the level so that the waterfall display is just showing the main signals or whatever you wish, really. And uh, 
that um, level control there is uh, is selected from the menu up there. One thing I did notice is that the um, waterfall display is not affected by the RF gain control. I can turn the RF gain control right back or turn it right up and you'll see there's no change in the level of the waterfall display. It does change if I uh, select um, uh, the um, preamps then the intensity does change but um, uh, the uh, setting um, of the RF gain control has no effect at all. Now you can change the um, speed of the uh, scan and uh, you can also change the actual span of the display. You can go from uh, one kilohertz up to uh, one megahertz. So it's uh, very flexible there. So um, they are the features that I spotted and that grabbed my attention and hopefully um, they'll uh, be useful to, uh, to you if you're thinking of uh, buying an FT-DX10. So, let's summarise my feelings about the radio. First of all, it's a great bit of engineering. The Yosu have done extremely well in producing this FT-DX10. And um, I think probably you could justifiably claim that it's probably today's equivalent of the FT-101 that so many used uh, in the uh, 1960s. <clears throat> I think it was the 1960s anyway. It was a, it was a long time ago. Um, the first thing that I noticed was the receiver. The receiver is good. I, when I switched the receiver on, I thought, yeah, I like this. It's got a nice sound to it. Now, I know that it may, may sound a bit silly, but, you know, I've listened to a lot of transceivers, and the moment you switch it on, you get a an impression and I got a good impression on that it, and and using it over the last uh, three weeks um, I must say that the, the receiver is good I like it the filter filtering is very good I like the way that Yosu have implemented this filter it goes from wide to very narrow what I forgot to show on the screen um, was the three roofing filters I've got three roofing filters uh, got it right. It's 500 hertz for CW, 3 kilohertz for SSB, and 12 kilohertz for AM and FM. And those roofing filters are at the um, IF level. So they sort of shape the signal. And it does seem to have a sound that is... It, 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 the sound coming out of the speaker sounds good. It sounds right. So I, I, I was more than happy using the... Uh, the, the, the transceiver. Um, band changing, it, the, when you ba change band there's about one second before it changes band. It's not a fault, it's the way it obviously obviously works. Um, I noticed that. Um, for CW, yeah fine. In fact for CW it's very good, the filtering is excellent and if you switch in that um, audio filter as well you can get really single signal reception. I could make CW signals really jump out. Um, the, there is relay changeover, um, although you can do full braking, I don't think it's really, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing full braking because I don't like the sort of click. It's not a loud click, but the relay's going backwards and forwards. Um, I believe that most people don't operate full braking, they operate semi-braking, and for, for that it's, it's, it's fine. Transmitter side seemed to work okay, the audio reports were good, it's got compression, um, and you can fiddle about with the... Uh, audio passband. By the way, <laughs> I think, looking at the manual, I think uh, Yesu have gone overboard on equalisation and tailoring the audio. Um, there's a lot of information and a lot of things you can do in tailoring the audio, both on transmit and receive, and you need to sit down one evening with a cup of coffee and read through it. You can certainly tailor the audio, both on receive and transmit, to suit uh, your own preferences. Um, it's a bit of a challenge probably to set it, up, set it all up, not because it's complicated to set up, but because you've got to decide which, which is right for you. And I, could, I, did, I, did, I did try it on the receive side, 
um, it was that was fairly easy. I think on the transmit side, it's not so easy because you've got to um, make a decision. Does this sound right? Are you can you when you listen to your own voice? Are you really listening to your own voice and so forth? Probably the most sensible thing to do would be to record. And that's the point. Of course, you can record your voice and CW to record your voice and then play about with the with the controls. But there's there's a lot to play about with there. <laughs> The internal ATU, auto ATU, seems fine. I mean, Yesu claimed that it'll, it'll match up to 3 to 1. Um, I found it would actually handle more than 3 to 1, to be honest. Um, so I think the 3 to 1 is a broad generalisation, but it seems to work. It's, it's, um, it's got memories and so forth. So once you've, once you've tuned up on a particular band with a particular antenna, it, mem it memorises that. And when you go back, um, it's, uh, it, it knows where, what it needs to do to, for that band with that antenna. One thing I would say, um, if you're thinking of buying an FTDX10 or any other transceiver that comes to that, don't forget that you can generally speak in download the manuals now. And if you download the manual, you get an awful lot of information, more information that you'll ever get from uh, the brochure that you might download. Um, I would recommend da downloading the manual. And in fact, I usually download the manuals anyway because I find having a manual on an iPad is much more handy. Um, it also stops the, the manual getting dog-eared, so if you do sell your radio on in the future, you can probably sell it with a fairly clean manual. So um, that's one recommendation I'd make. So how would I rate the FTDX10? Well, a bit of history. I've been using the Ellicraft K3, not the K3S, the K3 for a long while now, and more than happy with it. The thing I like about the Ellicraft K3 is all the controls are there in front of you. You don't often have to go into the menu system. Um, key speed, delay, vox level, all those sort of things are, are there. Um, then I switched about six months ago to the IC7300 because I, th I thought I should try this radio out because um, everybody seems to have one and I'm more than happy with it. Very, very, very happy with it. And uh, it really underlines the fact that um, a modern radio has got a very good performance and probably the difference between the 7300 and the 7610 is really the features not so much the performance in any slight edge the 7610 would have is probably neither here nor there in terms of its ability to copy signals but it's got a second receiver and it's got a lot of other additional features uh, the FTDX10 is a down, is a down, down, not I'm sorry, down. It's not downsize, is it? It's, it's a, it's a, um, a single receiver version of the FTDX101. Um, it's very good. Um, it does have the edge on the 7300 in terms of some of the facilities it offers. You've got the audio passband filter. You've got the RTTY, which they seem to have spent quite a bit of time on. Yeah, so. Um, as I say, there are some there are some things that's got a slightly larger screen and so forth. Um, so I yes, I could, I, I could live with it. Yeah, I could live with it. It's, it's a nice it's a nice transceiver. You wouldn't be disappointed. Um, you do have to spend a bit of time reading the manual because um, there's a lot of things that it can do, and you sometimes think, wait a minute, how do I do this? How do I do that? So that's another reason for putting it on your on your iPad because on your iPad you can search for I don't know Vox or whatever you want to search for rather than thumb through the pages and get them dog-eared. So another reason for that. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a nice radio. Um, we've certainly sold quite a few um, since it's been on the market and hasn't been on the market that long. Um, it's a bit more expensive than the seven three double O, but it's got a few more features. Um, but you know, <laughs> if you if you are, per, are a person that's always had a Yaesu radio, you probably wouldn't even think of changing to the IC7300 and vice versa. If you've always had ICOM, you probably would stay with ICOM. And that's fine, because at the end of the day, as I've said several times, I think in this review now, it's the features which matter. And if both radios have got the features you need then you'll probably stay loyal to the brand that you've uh, stayed loyal, loyal with for a long time so it's a great radio and i'm not going to say that there's anything on that radio that i don't like um that would stop me buying it um i think it's it's a it's a good it's a good radio 
and I think it'll stay around for an awful long time. So there we are. So thanks for watching this video. I hope that uh, it's been useful. And I hope it shows that we at Waters and Stanton care uh, about um, providing good information to customers. And probably it's one of the reasons why um, so many people shop with us. Uh, if you're interested in buying an FTDX 10 or whatever, give our sales guys a call if you've got any questions. And um, by all means, mention that you've watched this video because uh, they may do a little bit off for you. Just talk to them nicely and say, Peter said, there we are. I'll say no more. <laughs> anyway, as I say, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. Enjoy your home radio because that's what it's all about. It's a hobby. Take care and we'll speak soon again, I'm sure. Bye.